Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and today we're going to talk about chromosome instability or chromosome breakage syndromes. Those are a group of autosomal recessive diseases which are associated with an increased risk of developing cancer. Chromosome breakage is random visible lesions which are induced by a faulty DNA repair synthesis or environmental insults like for example radiation, chemicals, UV rays, stuff like that. In normal healthy individuals this happens very rarely but there are some single gene syndromes which lead to a higher incidence of breakage and this is also associated with the increased risk for malignancy. And this chromosome breakage leads to an unbalanced or uneven distribution of the genetic material to the gametes and also to the somatic cells. So it can result in a deletion or a translocation. And the, these autosomal recessive disorders, there are a few which I will talk about. It's for one, the Fanconi anemia, the lewis barr syndrome, then there's the Werner syndrome and the Nijmegen breakage syndrome, which I will not talk about. And then the Bloom syndrome and Xeroderma pigmentosum. Now I want to first talk about the Lewis Barr syndrome. It has three names you might recognize it from. First Lewis Barr syndrome, then Boda Sedwick syndrome, and Ataxia teleangiectasia. As I mentioned earlier, it is an autosomal recessive disorder and it affects the AT gene on chromosome 11 gene locus Q223. The mutated gene is called ATM, not for minibank, but for serine protein kinase ATM, which is a sensor for DNA damages caused by UV rays specifically, and then it regulates either DNA repair or the apopto apoptosis, so the control cell death. Many cell lines are affected by the mutation, which explains why there is a symptomatic variability. The onset of symptoms is usually two to three years of age in children and symptoms are cerebellar ataxia, so insecurity in standing and walking, cerebellar atrophy, especially in the area of their vermis. Also disturbance of eye movement, eye movement like for example anastagmus, and later on in the development physical and mental developmental delay might be visible. Also, teleangiectasis develop, which are dilations of the small arteries, especially in the face and the connect connective tissue of the eye. There's also an increased susceptibility to infections because of a T-cell defect, and also increased probability of developing leukemia and Hodgkin lymphoma. The risk is approximately 100 times higher than for a healthy individual. Diagnosis of this syndrome is done by imaging techniques, and also by decreased immunoglobulin values and lymphopenia, which is visible in the blood. Also often the alpha-1 fetoprotein is increased. So far there is no cure. There is only symptomatic treatment with antibiotics once an infection occurs and prophylactic vaccination of the children to prevent maybe unnecessary diseases. Life expectancy of affected individuals is decreased due to pneumonias and um, cancer development, and it's approximately 20 years. Scientists concluded approximately 0.5 to 1% of the population are heterogeneous and carry the mutation, while approximately 1 in 40,000 newborns is homozygotically affected and will express the disease. Now I want to talk about the Bloom syndrome also called congenital teleangiectatic syndrome. It's a very rare inherited disease and it's also autosomal recessive. It is difficult to conclude how many people are actually affected because many doctors don't know the symptoms and don't know how to diagnose it or when they have a patient in their office with it. But what literature said was that it's slightly more common in Ashkenazi Jews. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly. And in this group, it's approximately 1 in 48,000 births. Children are characteristic with the appearance of migrognatia, so a small jaw, also small height, and teleangiectasis of skin. 
Also, they usually either present with hyper or hypopigmentation, immune defects, and an increased rate of leukemia and melanoma. The increased risk for melanoma is due to the hyper or hypopigmentation of the skin and uh, precancerous lesions, which can develop due to uh, sun exposure. The mutation for the syndrome is in the BLM gene, which codes for the Bloom syndrome protein, which is a helicase which controls the integrity of the interface in the cell cycle. If you have any questions to the cell cycle, I also made a video about that, so you can see that also. And the mutation here leads to defects in replication or DNA repair, and also the recombination is influenced. So it is visible that there is a higher rate of sister chromatid exchanges, which is the exchange of chromosome pieces between two sister chromatids. In a normal individual, the maximum rate for that is approximately 6 to 10 exchanges, while in Bloom syndrome, easily more than 50 sister chromatid exchanges can be seen. Also here is no cure, only therapy with antibiotics and prophylactic vaccines. The next disorder I want to talk about is the Fanconi's anemia. It is an upper limb abnormality, which is usually seen in patients, especially in the radius and thumb. There is usually increased pigma pigmentation of the skin and deficiency of all types of blood cells, so pancytopenia. There is decreased synthesis of red blood cells and white blood cells and increased blood cell lysis. There is an extremely increased risk for leukemia and solid tumors, especially of the mucosa. And earlier it was nearly always lethal, but by now, by narrow examination and observation by experts, the life expectancy can be increased. Children usually appear very pale due to the anemia, and at the age of 3 to 5, the bone marrow stops working, so this leads to a fatal aplastic anemia. There are 13 different subtypes of this disorder. Over 60%, however, are of type A. The defect for type A is on chromosome 16, Q243, and for the subgroup B it's on the X chromosome, so only boys are affected. It's estimated that approximately 5 to 10 newborns are affected by 1 million births, so that means that in Germany, which has approximately 83 million inhabitants, there are currently 200 to 300 people living with it. Also here, only a few doctors know the signs and are able to diagnose it early and properly. So many might not be diagnosed, which can be fatal for the children affected because they need a bone marrow transplantation and therapy with androgens, which can stabilize the blood cell formation for months to years. Even if a bone marrow transplantation was successful, there will still be the old or the body's own cells produced, which are still damaged and the cell repair is still disturbed. So for as long as those affected individual, individuals live, they have an increased risk for pan cancer and close, to, close observation and um, examinations for the development of cancer are essential. The last disease I want to talk about is Xeroderma pigmentosa. The next disease I want to talk about is Xeroderma pigmentosa. Here patients have a light sensitive pigmented rash and they usually die of skin malignancy in sun exposed areas before the age of 20. It is also very rare but there is regional differences. In Japan it's approximately 1 in 40,000 births and in the US 1 in 250,000 births. Affected people have to avoid the sunlight because it causes hyperkeratotic lesions. Those lesions can develop to precancerous lesions due to the local inflammation. Later on, toward light growth, which can develop to malignant skin cancer, especially in the face, eyes and arms, since they are usually more exposed to sun. Also, this disease is autosomal recessive. It is a defect on DNA repair enzymes so the skin cannot regenerate. This disease has eight different types, which are affecting different genes on different chromosomes. There is no treatment so far, so the patients have to wear UV protection in the means of long clothes, sunglasses, tinted windows, and so on. I read that the NASA even developed a kind of suit like the ones of the astronauts, 
to keep those patients safe from sunlight. Often the circadian rhythm changes drastically for affected individuals, which can often lead to isolation and depression and vitamin D lack. So also here, of course, a close observation by experts is necessary. And also the screening for skin malignancy is important. I hope this video was helpful and interesting for you. If you have comments, feel free to post it in. If you have questions, feel free to post it in the comments. I will try to answer as soon as possible. And that's it for today. I would be very happy if you could subscribe. Thank you very much.